Bonjour, welcome to French One. I am Madame Rumbly. It is Wednesday, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, week 19, February 1st, and today's lesson is about oops, uh, mes voisins, or my neighbors. All right, quick little side note. Um, some students texted me that they saw each other um, at swim practice. Um, from and they're like, oh, we know each other from French class, so they took a picture and texted it to me. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> and uh, it, so, if you guys ever meet up with each other on accident or on purpose, somehow, um, send me a picture and we'll we'll share it. It's, it's always kind of fun to like feel like we're we're connecting, even though we're all so far apart. And another little side news. I found out that my baby is a boy. C'est un garçon. I don't know if you can see his picture. It zoomed in on his face. It's like a, here's his head. The side profile, there's his nose and like his mouth. I think he has, or actually, you know what? This is his arm right here. Like he's holding it like up against, holding his ear, his little tiny. And then this is like his other hand. Um, and it's all squished like a little big peanut. Anyways. C'est un garçon. I thought you guys, you are have invested in my life in a, in a sense. Um, and so I will share bits with you. <laughs> I'll, send pic I'll send pictures uh, when when he's born. I do have a name, but I'm going to wait to share it till he's born. <laughs> All right. Le programme pour aujourd'hui est prière, écriture, cultural corner, révision des voix, leçon 16, l'examen et des voix. Let's begin with prayer. Father, thank you so much that uh, things are going smoothly so far. I ask that you would keep the internet um, connection and my computer and all the tech things smooth for each of us, that we'd be able to um, enjoy this class together without technical difficulties. Um, we give this time up to you. Help me to teach well. Help each student to learn well and be blessed by the language French. We, um, we honor you in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. L'écriture pour aujourd'hui vient de... Oops. <laughs> I must have deleted the um, the address. If I'm remembering correctly, I think it is Jean 14 ans. I'll have to look it up. Was that what... Was John 14 one what we did last time? It's either 14 one or 14... Oops, I did too. 14, 14. We did 14 one last time? Okay, then it must be 14, 14. Okay. That's funny. Uh, si vous demandez quelque chose en mon nom, je le ferai. If you ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Okay. If... You ask, you guys probably could have guessed that line. Si vous demandez, if you ask, quelque chose means something. You know, we learned a couple weeks ago that chose means thing, just like a thing in general, chose. Quelque means um, some, like any old general something. Um En mon nom, in my name, I will do it. Okay. Si vous demandez quelque chose en mon nom, je le ferai. Uh, levez les mains, s'il vous plaît. Vous pouvez le parler. If you can't... Oh, thank you, Stephen. It's funny. I feel like there's always there's always one little error. It's not life. <laughs> one, one thing. One thing missing. Okay, so do not raise your hand if your mic's not working or if, if, if it's going to cut out your internet. Try to practice out loud where you are instead. All right. Alyssa, vas-y. Vous pouvez... Commencer. Yes, go ahead. Très 
Très bien. Très bien. Steven? Stéphane? Yes. Quatorze. Yeah, there's there the Z E at the end. Quatorze. Good, good. It's not an easy one to say. Yes. Well done. You sound great. Très bien. All right. Um, Elaine. Oops. There you go. Yes. Sounded perfect, Elaine. Well done. Great accent. Danielle? Mm hmm. Well done. No corrections. Isabella? Mm hmm Good job, Isabel. Très bien. Yeah, demandé. You got it. All right. Katie? Oops, there it is, okay. Perfect, no corrections. Saha? Sorry, it's, I don't know why it's tricky giving you guys individual permission sometimes. There you go, okay. Mm-hmm. Great. That sounded great. Rebecca? I have so few corrections for you guys. I'm very proud. Sure. Oh, Victoria, don't you don't need to be sorry. I'd love to pronounce it for you. Kel -ke. Let's see if I could spell it phonetically. Yes. Great. That sounded great, Rebecca. Well done. Okay. Oh, come on. <laughs> These little buttons. I don't know why my computer's not letting me. Okay, Rachel, you're up. You know what? This is too time consuming. I'm going to give everyone permission to just turn it on when it's your turn. I'll turn it off when we're done. I don't know why my, my mouth, it's, I'm not doing something right. Rachel, your turn. Uh-oh. That's why. All right. Let's see. Can you guys hear me? Hello, bonjour.
Uh oh. Okay. My goodness. No, it's not even. No, don't do this. We will start over. Happy recording. You get to watch all this. Okay. This is the most exciting recording ever. Okay, hopefully we'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Um, isn't that strange? I like I'm only using the same internet, same computer as before, and for some reason it's not working as well this semester. Okay, so um, I'm sorry I don't remember who just went, but you sounded great. Um, Olivia, you're up next. Vazi. Mm hmm. Great job. That sounded excellent. Morgan, your turn. Yes. Excellent. Good job. All right, Hannah, you're up. How's my lag, everyone? Yes. Good. That sounds good, Hannah. Well done. Tiffany? Yes. Good job, Tiffany. Can you say en mon nom? Good. That the en here is long. You said you sound. It sounded kind of like I don't know. I'm being nitpicky, but good job. <laughs> good job. All right, Tip, uh, Victoria, your turn. Yes. Good. Well done, Victoria. And then last but certainly not least, oh no, Isabel, you already went, didn't you? Okay. That's everyone then. Did anyone not get a chance to go that wanted to? All right. Très bien. Hopefully that is all of our tech problems for today. Let's do our cultural corner. Can you say it one more time? Sure, Annie. Si vous demandez quelque chose en mon nom, je le ferai. Jean 14, 14. You have, Rachel. Everyone has improved so much since the beginning of the year. In confidence and pronunciation, um, I, I feel like I hardly do corrections anymore. So I'm very proud of you guys. All right. Today's cultural corner is kind of fun. I, as you may have guessed by now, love language. Um, and there's a interesting thing that happens. Like I studied language pretty in depth in in school and uh, like in in training in college and stuff. And often what happens is um, people from one country will borrow a word from another country, um, and uh, and it will sound the same as the way it sounds in 
the original language and it has like an adopted meaning or a new meaning or it kind of changes, I'll show you what I mean. Um, they're called, it's called borrowed, um, borrowed language. But over time it gets a little bit changed in pronunciation and spelling and meaning. So it becomes hidden. So here are some hidden French in English. Um, yeah, borrowed is the technical linguistic term. <laughs> uh, vinegar comes from the French vin aigre. Getting ahead. I'll answer that in a second. So vin is wine and then aigre is sour. Because um, I think, I don't know about like the first, but many, vin there's some vinegars that um, like red wine vinegar comes from from wine. Um, so it literally means sour wine. Vin is, is wine, like vi vintage or vineyard or something like that. Um, <laughs> and eggla is sour. Um, curfew. Yes, Elaine, my dad said the same thing is true for Chinese. It's true of many, probably all languages, borrow one nearby languages. And there'd be random English words with Chinese twists. Yes. Yes. Um, do these words mean the same thing? Some of them mean the same identical thing and some are um, uh, a change, have changed over time or were misinterpreted or something like that. Curfew means couvre feu, feu or cover from, comes from the French to cover the fire as in put out the lights. Couvre feu, and it became curfew. Now, I'm sure there's like a story behind each of these, whether some English person heard a French person saying it or a French person started saying it and French English people started adopting it. I don't know, but somehow it's been adopted in English. Dandelion, it means dent de lion. Teeth, like dentist, to answer your question, Rachel. Dent means teeth, like uh, same root as dentist. De lion, of a, of a lion. And I think it's because the... Um, the leaves on dandelions are really kind of like prickly or something. I'm not entirely sure why. Um, uh, porcupine is um, the in the front from the French pig porc, which is where we get our word pork. It's from the French word pig porc. Um, Epine, like a, a spiny, a spiny or, or um, pokey with needles pig, which makes sense because in English, does anyone know what a baby hedgehog is called? Or a porcupine? Yes, yeah, spiny pig. A baby hedgehog or a baby porcupine are called piglets. And so I think it's because it's, it's that's how it's all connected. Anyways, debonair, or sorry, that was <laughs> debonair in English, um, which, you know, means like, like a gentlemanly gentleman kind of thing, um, or kind of, I don't know, does anyone have a better description for the word deb debonair? Um, yes, it means de bon, it comes from the French, de bon air, of good air, to have a good air about you, or like atmosphere, or f feeling about you, um, de bon air, that's kind of like an expression, and it became adopted as one word to mean someone who's who has a good a good vibe about them or are a good a good person or something like that. Mortgage has kind of changed over time, but uh, it does. Mort means comes from the French um, word for death, mort, like mortuary. And then gage is a um, contract. Yes, a death contract. So I I had to do some research. It doesn't mean I mean, people changed it in like more re in more recent decades to for it to mean like, um, uh, you. I don't want to get all complicated, but anyways, the the the, the original meaning of uh, there's like in front in France when you'd buy a house, you'd either have um the dead contract the dead contract or the living contract and it didn't have to do with the life of the person buying the house but it had to do with whether the money they were paying was paying off the interest or paying off the prime the principal balance of them doesn't really matter you don't need to understand mortgages or loans yet <laughs> but um 
it had to do with how much profit you were making, basically. A dead contract of the mortgage was one where you were not making much of a of a profit off of it or wasn't as financially effective. Uh, and it became kind of the only word for the way we buy houses. Anyways, next one. Uh, my husband's a pilot. The protocol for if you're crashing or need help or something is you say mayday, mayday, mayday three times. Well, you say the word mayday three times. And it comes from the French, venez mayday, come help me. Oh, cool, Olivia. Mayday is how you pronounce that. And that sounds the exact same as mayday. So mayday is help, to help me. And venez, we learned last week, means to come. And then um, this one. So I found this list online somewhere, but I added this one that I, I learned somewhere. That um, the word alarm comes from the French, alarme, to the weapons, to the armory, to, the, to our arms, you know, to... Um, like wake up to the to the weaponry room or something like that, and um, so it had more of a military meaning to begin with, and over time, kind of um, dwindled into just that feeling of being aware and ready. So, fun little language thing. With there, there is French hiding in many of our Eng English words. In here are some of them. I'm sure there are many more you could you could Google. Um, and many more of other languages, too. But there you go. All right. Let's do some flash vocab. We did the verb venir last week. Can anyone tell me in the chat, how do we, what, well, actually, first, what does venir even mean? To what? To come. Very good. What, how do we conjugate venir with je? Je... Very good. Je viens. Très bien. How about tu? Tu viens. Très bien. Il, elle. Very good. Viens with a T this time. Nous. Venons. Vous. Venez, très bien. Et finalement, il, elle. Oops. Very good. Vienne, vienne. Good. And then we also have, we also learned the verb revenir, or to return. And that's the exact same, except we just simply add an RE in front of all of these. Reviens. Reviens. I won't do the whole thing, but, well, maybe I'm halfway there. Revenons. Revenez. And reviennes. Any questions about that? All right. Um, we also learned how to combine what happens when the definite articles le, la, and le, and then also l apostrophe, comes to the next to the preposition de. What does de and le become when they're next to each other? They are not allowed to be very good. <laughs> Close. It becomes du. So de and le are not allowed to be next to each other like that. Bad, bad, bad. How about de la? That one stays the same. It's fine. The lady goes free. How about de lait? De lait. De. De and lait are not allowed to go next to each other. Oops, that was a very overly excited line. Good. How about de l'apostrophe? That one can remain the same as well. Good. So it is different slightly than the, like the day here. Day is different than when we, when this is an A, uh, that becomes O, A, U, X, but the de plus le becomes day. So that is kind of different. Any questions about that? Très bien. Next. 
Um, we learned our stress pronouns, the objective case, I think is how we say it in English, uh, the, the ones where we're pointing to, I, I always think of it as pointing. Um, it's either, it's either I or it's, I'm pointing to me or it's, so what's, what's the French word, for, what's the French stress pronoun for je? Moi. Very good. What's the French stress pronoun for tu? Toi. Very good. What's the one for il, et, for, um, il and elle? Very good. Lui et elle. How about for nous? That one stays the same. How about for vous? Also stays the same. And then how about for il, elle, pluriel? Uh, elle with an S on the L. Very good. Oops. Très bien, tout le monde. Any questions about these? They, they're, it's, I mean, it's a list for you to think about, but, it, or to memorize. So it's not like super hard to memorize the list, but when to use it can be harder. So we'll do some exercises. Um, let's talk, we, we did not get to go through this last week because we were completely cut off. So let's make sure we know what these are. Um, does anyone know what les échecs, the game les échecs? Très bien, checks, chess. How about uh, les jeux vidéo? Très bien. How about les jeux d'ordinateur? Okay. Very good. How about les dames? Checkers. Good. Yeah, I'm, am I going too quickly? <laughs> I just, I was just thinking that. How about les cartes? It's an easy one. It looks pretty much the same. It's like a cousin letter, the T and the D. Uh... <laughs> Le piano, the piano. How about le, le clavier? No, no. Clavier, you've actually seen before because it's the same name as a computer, a part of a desktop. It is in the book. It is a keyboard. It's the same in French and English where we use the word keyboard to refer to the computer part and then keyboard for also the um, the musical instrument. Le clavier, they're called the same. Très bien. How about le saxo? Saxophone, easy. Flute, easy. Guitar, easy. Clarinet, easy. What's la batterie? Good. Drums. All right, um, and this is this is the, the little lesson that we did not get to review. Um, we we had three categories of vocabulary last week. We had sports, we had um, games like chess and stuff, and we had instruments. Tell me which of these category which of these categories do we when we say we play the game or play the sport or play the instrument, do, which one do we say jouer à with? Two is yeah. So we use jouer à for sports and for games. We jouer à something when we play sports and when we do games. How about jouer de? Jouer de is for instruments or music. Très bien. Any questions about that? All right, let's do some exercises and solidify this in our brains. Um, this exercise, you are actually, tout le monde levez les mains and I'll read the directions while you raise your hands. We're on page 218, 218. Um, where am I? Tell a friend you are going to, um, where you are going and ask him or her to come along. 
So I would say, I'm going to the cafe. Um, to, uh, are you coming with me? So I could, that would be, actually, let me, what was the example? Hold on a second. It was a la pizzeria. Okay, so I'll do the example after I assign the exercises. Alyssa, numéro 1. Hannah, numéro 2. Rachel, numéro 3. Katie, numéro 4. Steven, numéro 5. So you're saying, I am at the place here. And then you and then your second sentence is, are you coming with me? Okay, so if my place is à la pizzeria, I would say, je vais à... La, changing my accent, à la pizzeria, tu viens avec moi? Oh, permissions would be helpful. Here you go. You just, you can just write the, no, just write, like, I'm going this place, Are you, do you want to come with me? just need to write those two sentences so that they kind of help you here but um we're, this exercise we're putting into practice the the a plus the article definite article um conjugating v and then conjugating bien Okay, number two, je vais à la bibliothèque, tu viens avec moi, parfait. Je vais, au café is masculin, le café, so try again, so it's, it's actually just, oh. Je vais à la piscine, tu viens avec moi, je vais au cybercafé, tu viens avec moi. Je vais à la centre commerciale, tu viens avec moi. Je vais au café, tu viens avec moi. Très bien. Lower your hands, re-raise them. On to the next. Um, now we're on page 220, 220. And you have to be looking at the pictures of the instruments or the games or the sports there. So... Ask your classmates if they play the following instruments or games. So you can just, for this exercise, just simply... Oops, am I doing the wrong one? I am. Never mind. That's the next exercise. Sorry. Okay, we're doing instead... Um, during vacation, Olivier goes out every day. When he gets home, his sister Sophie asks him where he is coming from. So again, you do need to be looking at your textbook because there's a little chart that says what he did Monday, where he did Tuesday, Wednesday, and so forth. So let's see. Vari, numéro 1. Olivia, Olivia numéro 2. Isabelle, numéro 3. Alain, numéro 4. Sarah, numéro 5. So you simply look at the chart and say, and see what he did that, what he, what he did that day. So she's going to, she would say, like, d'où viens-tu? Okay, let's see. You would ask the question, d'où viens-tu? And you would say, je viens de, okay, let's see. I'll pretend we're talking about Wednesday. He came from the library. Je viens de la bibliothèque. Okay, so the things we're putting into practice here, oops, wrong letter, is the um, conjugating vient, and then also using the proper form of de, du, de la, de. There is a past tense for, jam, for vient, but we're not learning that. Right now, we're just saying, I'm coming, like, I come back right now, or I am coming back right now from this place. Um, 
oh, I guess you could just say I'm coming. I guess either one is fine. You could either, like I'm coming from the restaurant. I'm returning. Mm, actually, it makes more sense to say I'm to say just the viens. Good question. No, because we have the de the de there tells us like that we're coming from the place. It would be redundant. Good question. Je viens de la restaurant. Okay, so restaurant is masculine. Le restaurant. So this would have to be de. Le. So try this part again. Je viens. Good conjugation. De la bibliothèque. Très bien. Je viens de la concert de rock. Je viens du boom de Christine d'aujourd'hui. Je viens du pique-nique de Monique. Ok, très bien. Ce numéro 1, um, <coughs> it would be de le, because restaurant is le. However, we remember, we never, ever, ever are, de and le are never allowed to be next to each other. Not allowed. So what do we do instead? Not allowed to be next to each other. What does it become? Très bien. Becomes du. Good job. Good job, guys. Yes. Flow your hands. Re-raise them. Um, this one was the one I started giving you the directions for accidentally. You have to be looking at the instrument, the sports the picture of the instrument, sports thing, or game, and you want to ask your your classmates if they play, or ask someone, write down the question, if they play the following games and instruments. So you, this is just a question. Um, so the example one is maybe ping pong. And also, there was also the um, keyboard. So I'll do the example. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me, right after I assign. Danielle, numéro 1. Rebecca, numéro 2. Abigail, numéro 3. Rachel, numéro 4. Steven, numéro 5. Katie, numéro 6. Alyssa, numéro 7. Hannah, numéro, oops, numéro 8. Um, Olivia, numéro 9. Annie, numéro 10. Just follow the number next to your name. Um, so you look at the picture next to your number, and then ask the question, est-ce que tu joues? And then, let's see, ping pong is a sport, so I would say, joue au ping pong. If, the, if my thing is an instrument keyboard, I would say, est-ce que tu joues du clavier? Let's see, what would it be? Le clavier? Le clavier, du clavier. So we're putting into practice our question, with all three parts. I'm putting into practice conjugating play, and I'm putting into practice whether I choose um, jouer à or jouer de. Number two, est-ce que, oh, you forgot the third part of est-ce que, number two. You just have s. You need est-ce que. Good. I'll raise my line. Est-ce que tu joues, actually flute is feminine, so it would not be du, it would, it would be the other form for a feminine. Noun. De la flute. Perfect. Good fixing. Okay. De la flute. Good. All, all done. Est-ce que, est que, with an E on the end, est-ce que tu joues? And in English, we say, do you play tennis? In French, we have to say, jouer à or jouer de le Tennis. So you're missing the preposition here. Numéro 4. 
I'm going to stretch out your sentence. Est-ce que tu joues de la clarinette? Très bien. Numéro 4. Or 5. Est-ce que tu joues de la batterie? Um, good. Numéro 6. Est-ce que tu joues aux échecs? Okay, so actually, échec is plural. So it would be a plus les. Échec is plural. So this is, and I like that you answered it, but this is the wrong form here. Okay. Number three, you're still not fully right, so keep trying. Numero set. Est-ce que tu joues? You forgot, to, number seven, you forgot to conjugate your verb. Est-ce que tu joues? Number six, still not right, because it has to be, it is plural, les échecs, but we joue à les échecs, we joue de les échecs. This is good. I'm glad we're practicing this. Okay, um, good. Est-ce que tu joues de... Actually, dame. Okay, dame is feminine, but it, the game is plural. With an S on the end. So you need to figure out... It, it is de, correct? No, no, it's not de. What am I saying? First of all, it's not de. Second of all, it's plural. So try again. Numéro huit. Uh, Est-ce que tu joues aux cartes? Très bien. Est-ce que tu joues de violon? Yeah, that's right. Est-ce que tu joues du tennis? Okay, you would be correct, except we do not say, for sports, we don't use de, we use a, jouer a. I'll write it again up here. Sports, let me do, actually, big font. Sports. Oops, I made it small again. Hold on a second. Sports and games, we say jouer à. Uh, instruments, we say jouer de. Okay, so, okay, yes, I know it's break. We'll do break after this one, I think. Number one, est-ce que tu joues um, à la guitare? Okay, so it is feminine. Guitare is feminine. Um, however, it we say when we play instruments, this is an instrument, guitare is an instrument, so we don't say jouer à, we say jouer de. That's what we're putting into practice here. Is there any clever way to remember which de and a go with games or instruments? Um, I mean, no, I mean, uh, yes, yes. Uh, we always use de for instruments. We use a for sports. And wh whether you choose du de la, oops, I'm in caps still, whether you choose, um, let's see, o, a, la, o, or whether you choose, um, du, de la, and de, depends on the gender of the noun. So, if, if my thing is, de, Something, yeah. What's the difference between basketball, le tennis, and tennis? No, basketball is basketball. And le tennis is tennis.
Okay, so let's do this. Let's do this. Okay, so est-ce que tu joues? Number one, it is a, an instrument. So we would say joue. Hold on. Joue de la guitare. No, je ne joue pas de la guitare. Do you see why? Okay, and then let's see. Est-ce que tu joues au tennis? Very good. There you go. You fixed it. Well done. Au tennis. Très bien. Uh, let's see which other ones are we. Uh, Est-ce que tu joues aux échecs? Aux échecs. Perfect. That's the that's the correct answer. Number set. Est-ce que tu Joue. So let's let's write it over here. We write it. Est-ce que tu joues? And then with it's a game, so I would say joue à, and then the game is les dames. But wait a second, I'm not allowed to have à and les next to each other, so this turns into de. Oh, oh, dumb. Okay, I think I'm missing some questions over here. I understand that, but is there a clever way to remember that A goes with sports and do goes with instruments? I just need to, oh. Um, Olivia, I'm sorry. No, I mean, I can't think of any other clever way besides just the category. Um, in French, do you gain okay, the cross from each other? Yes. Uh, that's the way it's set up. It looks like they're saying the translation of basketball is tennis. Oh, is it, um, is that confusing in the textbook? Where are they? So ten, in in French, uh, tennis is le tennis, and basketball is well the technical the whole word in French is le basketball, but they often just call it le basket. Does that help? Um, and then oh tennis, très bien. All right, good. I'm glad we got to work out some some uh, some things. Yeah, we could come up with something. Let me know if you guys come up with something clever. Any questions about this? I'm glad we're able to kind of iron out some of the problems maybe we're having. Cool. All right, well, it's time for us to take our five-minute break. Where did the time go? And then we'll come back and continue with the lesson. See you guys in five.